Welcome to Wheatley Provincial Park. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the area around the park in Chatham-Kent, and we're also going to be checking out all there is to do in the park. We're going to be visiting a fish and chip shop. We're going to be going to the Wheatley Harbour. Uh, we're going to check out a couple of great wineries. So thanks for joining us and enjoy the episode. Wheatley Provincial Park is the southernmost provincial park in all of Canada. In fact, it's at the same latitude as parts of Northern California. It is a one hour drive from the Detroit-Windsor border and is located in the town of Wheatley in Chatham-Kent. It has a two kilometer stretch of beach along Lake Erie with campgrounds placed among several creeks and forest setting. Okay, so this is the little paper. It's not a nice little newspaper yeah. type thing. So to fill, we have to go in and do a U-turn and come back and go down here okay. to the fill station. All right. And uh, then we come back here and have to drive through here again. Okay. And then we are in Highlands 91. Or the trailer dump station and uh, it looks set up pretty good. There's uh, one dump spot and one potable water fill up spot. It's uh, designed well so you got it sunk in here, nice curb around it, keeps all the mess together. It has a uh, threaded hose right here so that's uh, very handy when you have a black water flush. And uh, what I do like is it also has a bypass here. So if you finish dumping and there's somebody filling up with potable water over here, then you can just go right past them. You don't have to uh, wait for them to get out of the way. So that's real nice. The fresh water hose is also threaded. Makes it very handy to put on the filter. When I'm filling up with fresh water, I always go to the hot water tank. I make sure that uh, the hot water tank is open so the fresh water can go in there as there's 10 gallons uh, you want it to be filled up while you're uh, filling up the whole trailer open it up and you know how you uh, uh, open up the tap the first time after you fill it up especially the hot water one and it's a whole bunch of pressure coming through and it's spitting and everything well what you do is you release the pressure here you can hear the pressure being released and that helps fill up this tank and then when you uh, turn on the water inside the trailer afterwards there's not all that sputtering and, and spraying. Also you can tell when this tank is full when you open this up and water starts coming out. So just periodically a couple of times while it's filling up I do that until water comes out. There are four campgrounds, 92 electric and 133 non-electric. 
Boozy Creek has 57 non-electric. Highlands has 41 electric, 31 non-electric. Middle Creek has 51 electric. Two Creeks has 35 non-electric. There are two group camp sites. Each can accommodate nine to 50 campers. They are non-service sites uh, for tents only and they have vault toilets. There are a total of two hiking trails, approximately five kilometers. There are three comfort stations, one in Boozy Creek, one in Highland, and one between Middle Creek and Two Creeks. They have flush toilets and showers. There is a playground. It's actually located right beside the comfort station between Two Creeks and Middle Creeks campground. There is a tiny park store located at the registration office. It just has very limited supplies. There is no visitor center at Wheatley. Boozy Creek and Sugar Creek provide great opportunities for fishing. Lake Erie also provides great fishing opportunities. Smelt, perch, pickerel, and rainbow trout are some of the species that can be found. You can venture out in your boat from the public boat launch or fish off the pier at Wheatley Harbor. There is a 3.2 kilometer route, canoe route that you can canoe, kayak, or paddleboard on. There are no rentals. There is two kilometers of beach on the shores of Lake Erie. Unfortunately, there is no pet exercise area. Point Pelee National Park is a 25 minute drive from Wheatley. It has beautiful hiking trails. It is the southernmost tip of Canada and a national park's pass is required. If you want to head down to the beach for the day use area, you might want to think twice. Uh, the road's a doozy. So it turns out over the last couple of years, the water level's been so high, it completely washed out the road to the beach and most of the beach. There's no beach parking anymore. There's no access to it by car because the road's washed away. So you can walk down to the beach. It is very small right now, but it is still usable. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Spread my wings so I can fly Oh, and the darkness starts to fade Feels like things are gonna go my way I'm gonna... And then you get to the end, jump down to the camera Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! We've just gone all up and down the entire beach area of the park and uh, with the exception at the very end of the beach, um, which is a fair bit of a hike, uh, where you can actually just get down to the sand. This entrance right here is the first entrance. So if you park in the overflow parking to the uh, dump station, you can get like six or seven vehicles there. And you walk in here, it's probably about uh, 100, 150 meters. And this is the first entrance. And this appears to be the only entrance where they actually, where the park actually dug out the embankment here, put some pea gravel down to make it a little easier to get into. And this is the, uh, one of the widest parts of the beach area too. I'm surprised there's actually only one family here right now, but uh, this would be the place to go in. And it's the closest to the uh, trailer dump station and a parking lot. So if you've got a lot of gear, you got kids, and you wanna pull a wagon, this would be the one to go to. They're not marked in any way. There's no numbers or anything like that. Gonna let the past be filled with smoke And I will try to fix what has been broken And take this weight off my shoulders Cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I will listen to the ocean Let its unsaid words be spoken my mind be carried by the waves. 
bit of a rain day today. Uh, there's a bit of a break in the weather, so we decided to go for a hike. Uh, one thing is thinking about it on a rain day, you kind of look for uh, something to do and the uh, data for the phones. A lot of people ask how the uh, cell service is in the parks. Well, Wheatley here, there's a tower just outside of the park and it gives excellent service for Bell, TELUS and Rogers. So all the big cell phone providers have excellent service at Wheatley. One thing I didn't mention when we were at Long Point, and I thought it might happen here, but it hasn't happened here because we're just across from the US, across Lake Erie from the US. Oh. And that at Long Point, at the park, I got a message on my phone, welcome to the USA, you're now roaming. So I was a little bit concerned about that because a few years ago that happened to me and I got a great big bill and then I had to call Kudo, my service provider, and let them know that I never left Canada. I was at Long Point. And uh, they were good about it and they reimbursed me my money, but it still was a bit of a hassle and a bit of a shock to, uh, ooh, this is messy, a bit of a shock to uh, get that bill. But this year at Long Point, it did say I was roaming and it did say, welcome to the USA, but I got my bill and there was no issues with it. Uh, I guess they figured it out over the years. We're now at the Wheatley Harbour. This is the world's largest commercial freshwater fishing harbour. And if you want to taste some of the fish that comes in from here, that's when you go into town, just down the road, and it's a place called Taylor Fish Store. We're going to stop in there and grab a bite of some perch, maybe some pickerel. Fresh from Lake Erie. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. Thank you. Here's That's John's great. pickerel. Ooh, look at that. And here's our perch. Oh, there we go. Nice. I would love an apple. I love a fork. Mm. Oh my god, that is so good. There's a perch fillet right there. Very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a huge fish person, but nope. they're really good. It doesn't have all that big breading. batter breading on it's it. Just it's just lightly, lightly dusted. Yeah, it's yeah. good. So if the beach at the park is a little too difficult to navigate, you can go out of the park, take your immediate left, and the next left is Pier Road, and go to the very end of Pier Road, and you'll arrive at the Pier Road Beach. It has a small parking lot for maybe 20 cars, and uh, public beach access. It's quite nice. It's just a tiny little section, but it's not a bad option to come to.
it's time for Cole's Notes, our little summary of Wheatley Provincial Park. Shall we start with the pros first? I think we should. All right. Um, one of the first things I noticed when we arrived at Wheatley was how well maintained, well groomed, well manicured the sites were. The sites were all very private. Um, yeah, there was a, a lot of greenery between each site. From mm -hmm. our site, we couldn't even see any other sites. You could hear them, but at least you couldn't see them. Yeah, and there's a ton of waterfront sites. We really do like waterfront sites. We didn't have one this time, but there are a lot of waterfront sites mm -hmm. there. If you're into golf, there is a nine hole golf course. I think it's Talbot, what is it? Talbot Trail. Talbot Trail, just outside the entrance of the park. If you're into fishing, there's uh, if you have a waterfront site, you can fish right from your site. Um, there's also the pedestrian bridge and uh, a lot of people go in the middle of that and fish from there. Or you go into, uh, you can go to the Wheatley Harbor, fish off the pier there. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a kayak or canoe, you can fish in the, in the creeks or go into Lake Erie if you've got a power boat because there is a, a boat launch in town that you can use and you can go to Lake Erie and do some fishing. It's situated in a beautiful part of Ontario in Chatham, Kent. Um, a lot the, of greenhouses in the area. Yeah, it's wine country there too um, because the ground is so fertile. That's why there's the greenhouses and, and the vineyards. Um, as you saw, we visited a couple wineries. We really enjoyed that. And uh, we also got to sample the local cuisine. We got some nice yellow perch from uh, Lake Erie. And uh, our friends Sue and John tried the pickerel and they gave us a little taste of the pickerel. And it was fantastic. It was really good and I'm not a big fish person. Well, another thing I liked about Wheatley that I haven't seen at any of the other parks we've been to is the recycling program. Um, they have dumpsters convenient located at each um, loop, I guess, yep. each loop of the campground. And beside that are blue bins for the recycling. And what you do is you just take a blue box to your site, use it for your bottles, cans, etc. When you're finished, you just put it at your post and they will drive around and pick it up. Yeah, it wasn't too buggy. We were there mid-July. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. There's the odd mosquito or deer fly, but nothing nothing exciting. No caterpillars like we're hearing no about in so many other parks. No. Bunnies. There's a lot of bunnies. Yeah, a lot of bunnies. Yeah. And birds. Yeah. Now, there so are, are some negatives to this park. And uh, oh. one, of the, one of the big things is, and uh, the park can't help it at all, but the erosion to the beach area. That's unfortunate. So we spoke to the campground hosts, uh, Tony and Joyce, and they talked to us about uh, how it used to be in the park. And the day use area was huge. On weekends, they have hundreds of people show up to the day use area. And they had picnic shelters there, they had a children's playground there. Uh, they had washroom facilities all along the park or the uh, beach road. Um, they had all sorts of events going on there. Well, all that is gone now. The uh, park road or the, uh, sorry, the beach road is completely washed away and had fallen into Lake Erie. Um, most of the beach is gone. The access to the beach uh, is uh, very difficult. If you have mobility issues, you don't have a chance of getting down to the beach. Um, sometimes we had some trouble getting up and down to the beach. Uh, they just let that area go now, so there's no washroom facilities near the beach. There's nothing near there. There used to be a playground and a comfort right. station, but that and, is gone. And you can't drive to the beach anymore because the road's gone. Mm -hmm. So you have to hike from your site. So if you have a lot of gear, you're going to be <laughs> carrying it with you and uh, walking a bit of a distance to, to get to nice, the beach. It was a nice walk. Down yeah, and back. It was. It's nice going over that pedestrian bridge. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, which really surprised me um, is the uh, access to the creeks. Uh, when we went there, uh, we brought the kayaks, just fully intending to do some kayaking, maybe some stand up paddle boarding in there. But repeatedly, we tried to get down to the creek to go kayaking, and uh, there's no public access, there's no boat launch. There's no area that you can just put your kayaks in. Uh, staff at the park recommended that maybe we speak to somebody that has a waterfront site and ask them if we can cut through and put our kayaks in. Um, but, but then again, we checked a bunch of those waterfront sites. The water sites. level was too low, so 
that wasn't really an option. Yeah, for most of those sites, it's a big steep drop-off and you can't put them in. Now, there certainly are sites where you can put them in, but uh, so there, we never did go kayaking because there's no easy access to do it. So here's the difficulty, there's no easy access to the beach, there's no easy access to the creeks. So those are a couple of very negative things in, in my book. Can I just say one more small thing? Sure. Because I'm directionally challenged, I get lost in That's parks true. easy. I need it to look more like a neighborhood. I need better signage because we'd go to the end of the street. I don't know which way to turn to get out, to go wherever I want to go. I just need better signage. Yeah, when you're coming out of the park, right by uh, Boozy Campground, there's uh, a three-way intersection there uh, as you're like exiting the park, and there's no signs to say which way the exit is. So luckily I'm not as directionally challenged and I knew where I was going. But a few times Cheryl didn't know at that point which way we were I, supposed to go. I just take the scenic route and take forever to leave the park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a little better signage would be nice. I know a lot of parks are in that kind of similar situation. They don't have a very good signage, but Yeah. Um we did have a great time though. Uh yeah. we always have a great like time when we go camping. It is a nice park. We just have to balance the park with things to do outside of the park as well yeah which we did um the there is no designated uh, cycling trails but you can ride your bike around the uh, the campgrounds uh there's a little bit of hiking trails uh which we did some uh, nothing too exciting there so again similar to long point um this isn't the normal type of camping we do um oh. but we're just trying something new a quick thing. Sure. Did you mention about the visitor center? There's no visitor center and no actual store. There's a bit of a store in the check-in, but it's just very limited. Yep. So. so, as far as a rating goes, what do you think for a rating? I really like the park itself, but mm -hmm. there was a lack of quite a few things. I might give it a six or six and a half. Six or six and a half. How about you? So we gave Long Point a six. So you we think did. it's equal or better than Long Point, in your opinion? Well, I just like the campground portion, mm -hmm. even though there wasn't the best beach. And you like where it's located, too. And I like the Good location. Good things to do it. in the area. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm rating it a five and a half. Well, that's a little bit low. I know. We don't usually disagree on these things. We usually are kind of like-mindedness. I think a nice campsite's important. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well... So. I think we need to compromise here. So you're saying six and a half. I'm saying five and a half. Six. I guess we're saying a six. Six it is. We're going to go with six. Let's bring in the graphic. Okay. And that's our review of Wheatley Provincial Park. And next we're going to be going to... Rondo. Rondo Provincial Park, where we happen to be sitting right now. And so that'll Stay be coming tuned. out in a week or two. We'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.